5.2 congruent polygons. Polygons, shapes with any number of sides, are congruent to each other or equal to each other if they're corresponding parts are congruent. Rigid motion preserves length and angle measure. So corresponding sides and corresponding angles are congruent. These relationships can be identified by arc and tick marks. So these two triangles are congruent to each other and you can use the arc marks and the tick marks to see who is corresponding to who. So one arc mark, or I'm sorry, one, yeah, one arc mark on angle A matches to D. B has three, so it matches to E. And C has two arc marks, so it matches to angle F. Then your corresponding sides have tick marks on them as well. So A, B, A, B, the two tick marks matches with the two tick marks. Then B, C, the one tick mark matches with the one tick mark and AC the three and the three. So um, if you're going to write a congruence statement for these two triangles, you need to go in the same order when you write the triangle name. So if I say triangle ABC, so that's from one arc to three to two, I need to go in the same direction when I say it's congruent to the second triangle. So then I start at the one arc mark D and then to E and then F. Most of the time from textbooks, you'll get the um, letters in alphabetical order, but that will not always be true, just sometimes. Example one, write a congruence statement, just like we just wrote for the triangles. Identify all the pairs of congruent corresponding parts. So if we want to say that these are congruent, I can see that they're congruent because they have all the same markings and angles. So we can say that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle, got to go the same order. So I went from two to three to one. So same order, two to three to one, T to S to R. That's a congruence statement. Now we just want to list the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides. So I know that two tick marks matches with two tick marks. So angle J is congruent to angle T. K has three, S has T. So angle K is congruent to angle S. Then uh, one tick mark matches with one tick mark, so angle uh, L is congruent to angle R. Now we do the same thing with the sides. We look at the tick marks though. So JK, this one tick mark is congruent to ST. We wanna go in the same direction. So um, if I say JK from the two to the three, I wanna go the same direction. So TS is the appropriate direction. Be careful about that on your homework. Uh, make sure you go in the right direction. KL is congruent to SR and LJ is congruent to RT. Again, make sure you go in the right order. Order does matter when listing corresponding parts. Example number two, in the diagram, DEFG is congruent to SPQR. So they're saying that these two They're saying that, I'm sorry, they're saying that these two quadrilaterals are congruent. Find the value of X and Y. So first thing you need to do is figure out who matches with who. So you, usually I start with the smallest side and I match it up so I can see that D, uh, DG is congruent to SR. So really this right hand one, imagine that you could turn it over and sit it upright. Um, you would just need to flip it uh, all the way onto the other side and rotate it 180 degrees and then it would be facing exactly the same direction. So I can see that 12 matches with 2x minus 4. So GF or FG 
is equal to qr. So if that's the case, we can set those equal. So 12 equals 2x minus 4. And we can solve for x. So add 4, 2x equals 16, divide by 2, so x equals 8. Now here's the second expression, y and x. So angle Q um, matches or corresponds to angle F. Those match each other. So we can say angle F equals angle Q. So 68 equals 6x plus, or I'm sorry, 6y plus x. But now we know what the value of x is, I calculated it over here. So 68 equals 6y plus 8. Subtract 8 and we get 6y equals 60 and y equals 10. Pause this video and try example 3 on your own. should get x equal to 10 and y equal to 27. So what is a minimum amount of information that you need uh, to determine whether or not these two triangles are congruent? And in this case, you can say, well, that not their, I'm sorry, not that the triangles are congruent, but that their angles are congruent. There's something called the third angle theorem that if you know two angles of one triangle and they're congruent to two angles of a second triangle, then the third angles must be congruent as well. So that means that angle C must be congruent to angle F. So you need to know that two angles of one triangle are congruent to two triangles of an, two angles of another triangle, then the two angles are also congruent. It's called the third angle theorem. So we'll try it here. Find the measure of angle P. Angle P corresponds to angle B. I can also see that this is 52 degrees and that arc mark matches angle R. So that means that angle R is 52 degrees as well and my 90 degree angles match. So I just need to use the third angle theorem or calculate this third angle to find the measure of angle P. So 90 plus 52 is 142 minus 180 is 38. So that means that angle P is 38 degrees. Pause this video and try the second example on your own. Uh, 65 degrees. Example five. In the figure, LMN is uh, congruent to RST. Find the values of X and Y. So first one I notice is that this X is alone. So this uh, angle R is congruent to angle L. I don't know angle L, but I do know angle S and I do know angle N. So angle S is congruent to angle M. So that means that this is 93 degrees. This is 63 degrees. So we can figure out what this angle measure here is. If we calculate that, if we um, add 93 and 63 and subtract from 180, we get 24. So that means that three angle R and angle L are congruent. So angle L equals angle R. So 24 equals 3x. Divide by 3 and we get x equal to 8. 
Now, 3x plus y, sr is congruent to the long, the not quite the longest side, the second to longest side, the medium side. So if we say sr, or I really should say lm first, but that's okay. sr is equal to ml. We can say 3x plus y equals 43. But I know what the x value is, so 3 times 8 plus y equals 43. 24 plus y equals 43. Subtract 24 and y equals 19. Thank you.